Okay, so our goal with the subsequent videos is to come up with some of the other variations of the acceleration equations. And in order to come up with the second equation, we're actually going to take a step back and think about average velocity. When we first defined of average velocity, we tended to think about problems in which we, we had constant velocity. When we had constant velocity, then average and instantaneous were the same thing. But obviously now we're talking about acceleration, so we need to think about the average velocity in a different way. And let me just give you an example. Um, if you think about the average of 10 and 30. Well, what is the average of 10 and 30? Well, it's not too complicated to realize that it's 20. The average of 10 and 30 is 20. So can I say that in an example where my velocity started at 10 and my velocity ended at 30, can I say that the average velocity for that motion was 20? Obviously, the velocity changed. It wasn't a constant velocity situation. But could I legitimately say that the velocity was 20? This is our question. is this valid when we have accelerated motion to just do this simple way of thinking about average velocity as just add the two velocities the beginning and the end obviously there are two velocities there will always be two velocities the initial and the final and then I'll just cut them in half well it turns out that it is valid under certain circumstances or certain conditions so very important to recognize not always for example, what if I travel at 10 meters per second for 9 seconds, then We'll travel at 30 meters per second for one second. Can I make this statement that the average velocity equals 20 meters per second? Is that legitimate to make that statement? Well, I, I think you can recognize that and that really wouldn't be a fair statement because if I spend a lot more time at 10 meters per second, then it's unlikely when I move for just a short period of time at 30 meters per second that the average of those two is somehow going to work out to be 20 meters per second. That is to say that if we think about the distance that we're going to travel here, at 90 meters per second, or at 10 meters per second, sorry, for 9 seconds, that would be 90 meters per second. Then if I travel at, for one second at 30 meters per second, I'll travel 30 meters. Well, 90 and 30 is 120. But 120 divided by the total time traveled of 10 seconds, that does not give me 20 meters per second. That gives me 12 meters per second. So no, it's not legitimate to say that I simply add the two together and I will end up with an average speed that is somewhere in between them. But if we were to make that transition very smoothly, if instead of going from 10 for a long time and then 30 for a short time or flipping it around 30 for a long time and 10 for a short time if instead I smoothly changed from 10 to 30 it should make a little more sense to you that then that would be legitimate because essentially at every speed between 10 and 30 I'm spending an equal amount of time at each of the possible velocities and if I do that then the condition is met where I can simply add the two velocities and cut them in half and then they will be equal to the midpoint. So the condition, this is extremely important, the condition is constant acceleration. If I don't change the value of the acceleration, if I smoothly make the change, then it's completely legitimate to simply add the final initial velocity and cut them in half to come up with a new version of an equation for the average velocity. So if you remember the old version of the equation for velocity, that will be really helpful because right now we're going to write the new version of the average velocity equation and that is that V average is going to be equal to V plus V naught 
divided by 2. Why divided by 2? Because that's the formula for the average. You take the number of entries and you divide by the number of entries. Well, in this case, we'll always have two entries, the initial and the final velocity. So that's actually a new equation that we can use for finding the average velocity when the velocity actually changes. Right? It was easier before because under the old system, we simply had that V average was equal to D divided by T. So the new equation, the old equation. Now, hopefully you recognize what we're about to do and since this is equal to the average velocity, and I can always say that the average velocity is d over t, this is a legitimate formula anytime, whether there's acceleration or not acceleration. The average velocity is the total distance divided by the time, or the total displacement divided by time, I should say. So you can see that we could take this and just simply set it equal to this. It's sort of a form of substitution. So if I take the d, over t and set that equal to v plus v naught divided by 2, then I can combine these together and what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the one, the 2 on the bottom, I'm going to bring it out to the front so it says 1 half. You can leave it like this, there's nothing wrong with that. What I'd like to do is to solve this equation for d. And so all I need to do in order for that to happen is to bring the t over to the side right here. Um, but when I do that, I'm going to bring the one-half out to the front. So this equation leads to a very important second acceleration equation, and that is one-half V plus V naught times T. Now, how is this equation different from our previous equation? Well, let's go back and take a quick look at that previous equation. In the previous equation, our four variables were V, a, T, and V naught. If you look at the new equation, it's a little bit different. It's missing one of the variables that was in the previous equation, but now a new variable has replaced it. So if you look carefully at this, you will see that the acceleration is not present in this equation. There is acceleration in the motion, but it's not in this equation. So I have the, di the displacement or distance, the final velocity, initial velocity, and the time. So this is an equation that would be very useful when I don't know what the acceleration is, I don't care what the acceleration is, but I do care about these four variables. Just with the previous equation, four variables, I need to have three of those, and if I have three of them, then I can go ahead and solve for the fourth one. With the first equation I had four, with this one I have four, and any time you have an equation with four variables, you need three, you can solve for any of the fourth. It's not just an equation for D, it could be an equation for V, V naught, or T, any one of the four, depending on the circumstance. So let's go ahead and do a couple of quick uh, example problems. So June is going to accelerate from 15 meters per second to 65 meters per second over a period of 6.5 seconds. And the question is, what is her change in displacement during that acceleration? So let's just go right in order through the variables. The 15 meters per second, it says from 15, so that implies that that is the initial velocity. up to 65, so that is my final velocity. And that's going to occur over a time period of 6.50 seconds. And while this is enough information for me to figure out the acceleration, in this, equa in this question I'm not being asked about the acceleration. So this is really the, the goal behind having this new equation, is instead of having to find what was the acceleration, and then use that to somehow come up with the distance, I can go straight to the distance or displacement without having to use any uh, combination of equations. So for this one, let's take the equation d is one half v plus v naught times t, just like it was with the last one. We don't need to solve for anything. It's already solved for the uh, variable that I'm looking for. So that is one half 65 plus 15 times 6.5 and so 65 plus 15 is 80 cut 80 in half you get 40 so all we need to do is to take 40 times 6.5 and we get a final change in displacement of 260 meters 
Okay, and that's a straightforward problem. That's you know using the equation in its sort of st its standard form. However, just to remind you, the equation can be used to solve for any one of the four variables. So let's look at an alternative version of this in which um, we're not solving for the displacement, but instead one of the other variables. So how long will it take to accelerate uniformly from 10 meters per second to 50 meters per second over a distance of 35 meters? So in this one, rather than the time, we've been actually been given the displacement, or in this case the distance, and we're being asked to look for how long we're looking for the time. So let's go right in order through the variables that were given. I was given V naught. I was given V. And in this case, I was given D. And we are looking for T. So all the given is explicitly listed. The next step is to write the original version of the equation. And this is something that will be provided to you in the uh, equation sheet or the data booklet. And in this case, what I'd like to do is to solve for T. So let me do this in, I'll kind of go slowly, I'll do it in two steps. So first of all, I'm going to multiply by 2 to get rid of the 1 half. That's 2D equal to V plus V naught times T. Then I'm going to keep this V plus V naught together and I'm just going to divide the entire thing. So I end up with 2D over V plus V naught equal to T. And kind of the way I like to do it this way is when I've solved for the variable, I've moved all the uh, variables over to the left. So now on the right side, I'm going to rewrite this exact same version of the equation, except that I'm going to fill in all the values. So 2 times 35 divided by 50 plus 10. So 2 times 35 is 70. And then I have, sorry, 60 on the bottom. So 70 divided by 60 is 1.166 and then we will reduce that to the proper number of significant figures I'm sorry I should have said 10.0 here so I have 3, 3 and 3 my final answer should also have 3 that means the final answer is 1.17 seconds and you will see that you will be able to use these equations to solve for any one of the four variables. I don't think we have to go through all the examples in order for you to see that you could solve for any one of the four variables and as long as you have any three of those you can solve for the for the fourth one.